Welcome to your first video on Gantech, creating your first app, which will be a soundboard app. Um, this is what the end product will look like. It's going to be a picture view, and it's going to be a basic animal soundboard app. Um, what are soundboard apps? So I'm going to go to the Google Play Store. And once it loads, I'm going to type in soundboard. If I type in soundboard, I, I want to see more apps. You can see they have a bunch of soundboard apps currently in the Google Play Store. So this video is going to show you how to create your own original one. Let's just look at the current presidential nominee, Donald Trump soundboard light. You can see it has, it's simply a bunch of things or sayings that you, when you touch them, it's going to play that sound. So you can hear Donald Trump say, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, I'm officially running for president of the United States. And it's simply an app where you touch some text and it plays a sound. So that's a simple soundboard. And again, you can see there's hundreds of thousands of them on the Google Play Store. So back in App Inventor, this is what we're going to create. Your first project will be an animal soundboard app. So you're going to pick six of your favorite animals. It's going to look just like this. So to start, we're going to go to Projects, Start a New Project. The project is going to be called Favorite Animals Soundboard. And I click OK. Now this app is going to be broken into two parts. First we're going to design it, and then the other video we're going to code it. So to design it, if we wanted to look at the example, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need an image of ourselves. We're going to need a label. We're going to need a bunch of these components. So to design it, in App Inventor, remember we pull things from our left side. We drag it to the middle. We rename them in our components window. And we also change the properties to align it. But when we first start out, we have our screen. And I want to update my screen properties. So I'm on screen one, my component. You can see it says screen one here, but I don't want it to say screen one. So I would change that by coming to my right side here. And this is going to be Jamie's favorite animals. So when I change it, you can see it changes it here. I also want to update a couple other properties here. So underneath app name, this is defaulted to the name of the project, but I also want this to say Jamie's animals. Now app name, the significance of this, when you install an app on your Android phone or device, whatever you type in here is the text that you see when you open up your ga app gallery. So you want to make sure that you always update this. Now the second thing is your icon. So the picture, if it's Facebook, you know it's Facebook underneath it and it has that blue image with the F inside it that's white. That's your icon. So you always want to first update your app name and your icon. So since this is Jamie's favorite animals, I'm going to go get a picture of myself. And if you don't have a picture of yourself, try Googling yourself, you'll be surprised. Or use your phone and you can save it. I'm going to use my baby picture. Save this image. And I'm for right now, I'm going to save it to my desktop. So you need an image of yourself. And you can find that on Facebook or take a picture of yourself with your phone and email it to you and you need to save it there. Because I want this icon to be that image. So I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to go to my desktop. There's my picture. And I click OK. Now again, this icon here is going to be the image that's seen when you open up your app gallery on your phone or your tablet. So we updated our app name, updated our icon. I want to have some effects so when my app first opens and closes, I want to have some effects. You can see right here I have closed screen animation. I'm going to select any one of these. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to say zoom when it closes. When it opens, I'm going to say fade. Actually, I'm going to switch that. When it closes, I'm going to do fade. When it opens, I'm going to do zoom. 
And then let's look at some of these other properties. We have background image, we have background color. So if I wanted to change it to something else, we're actually going to put a image in there. So I can leave it at none for right now, or white, which is the default. Background image, I want a cool background image. So I'm just going to Google that, cool backgrounds. And let's say I like this one. Or this is really cool because it's animals, right? So I'm going to take, I like this wolf. I'm going to save this image also. I'm going to save it as animals background. So you should find your own cool background. And we're going to update this background image. I'm going to click here. I'm going to upload this animals background that I just got. And click OK. You can see there's my cool little background image. So we're going to update a couple more of these properties. I want my app to stay portrait. Right now, if you look on the right side, under screen or orientation, it says unspecified. So if they turn the phone, it will adjust. I don't want it to adjust. So I can force it to be portrait, which is up and down. I wanted to, I could change it to be landscape. And then I could do my build my app that way. So I'm going to let you choose, but you need to change one of them to be portrait or landscape. So I'm going to leave mine's portrait. And then you can see some of the other properties on screen is scrollable, fixed, and the versions. What version of this? Version 1 of your app, version 1.2, and you, when you make updates. So so far, you should have simply clicked on screen and updated your app name. You should have updated your background image. You should have updated the opening and closing screen animations. You should have updated your icon. Then you should have updated your screen orientation. And lastly, your title, which shows up right here. So the next part of this, we want to see how our app's going to look. I'm going to go to the page. This is the design page, and I have an image up there uh, so we're going to have an image here, and I'm going to open this in a new so I can zoom into it. So this is what we're going for. We want our image. We have our cool background already. You can see that there. That's my. We want a, a picture of ourselves. We're going to have some text here. Then we're going to have our six animals. When they touch those animals, it's going to play the sounds. So we're just going to design and going to grab all the components we need. I'm going to tell you this looks like an image, but it's not actually an image. It's a button. And the reason is. In app design, you want to think about events. It's called event-driven programming. So if I simply want an image here that does nothing, I could use this image right here. But in our example, I want this image, when someone touches it, it's going to read, Welcome to my favorite animals apps. If I do that, I can't use an image because images don't have any events. I'll show you an example. If I drag this image here, when I come to blocks and I click on images, green blocks are simply properties. So if you look at this animation height, picture, rotation, scaling, all these green blocks are exactly what is shown here. Height, rotate picture. I, there's no event with that. If someone touches this, I cannot program that. But let me show you button. When I go to my blocks and click on button, brown blocks are events in App Inventor. So you can see I have a button that click, got focus, long click, lost focus, touch up. These are events that I can program with this component. So if I wanted, when someone touches the picture of myself, to speak to a the user, I would need to have this block button that click. 
So that's the difference. Even though this looks like it's an image, it's really a button that has an image on top of it. So we're going to delete this. Let's work with our button. So I drag my button in, and let's do that again. How often when it works, we drag from the left. I'm going to drag my button here. I'm going to rename it BTN Selfie because it's going to be a picture of myself. In App Inventor, I changed my properties on the right side. So let's make this height 150 pixels. Let's make this width 150 pixels. And then we need our image. Well, we actually already updated our image because remember, over here, we made our icon the picture of ourselves. So if I go back to button here, underneath image, I simply have to select that picture of me. Now, the last thing I want to get rid of is it says text for button one. I don't want it to say text for button one. So I would come down here to that property and delete it. So you can see really simply, I dragged a button in. I renamed it here, BTN Selfie. We changed the height and the width and we updated the picture and took out the text for that button. And we're starting to get closer to having our image. We have our background, now we have our image. Now I wanna center my image. Here's an error that most people do. They're gonna click on the button and they're going to click center here and nothing's happening. Center here, it says text alignment. Well, there's no text. If I type text in here, one, two, three, you can see my text is actually centered, but I'm not trying to center the text. I actually want to center this entire button inside of the screen. So a common error people think by selecting center here underneath text, it centers the entire button. No, it's centering whatever you type in this, bot, this box, this property. If I want to center my image currently, there's a bunch of ways to do it. We're going to center everything on the screen. So I'm going to go to screen. Now we use some of these properties. We didn't use these, align horizontal and align vertical. So you can see the reason my image button is at the top left is because it's aligned to the top and the left. If I want to center it, simply come here and I change it to center. So you can see I have that and we have that part of it. The next part we need to design is our label. Labels are simple text that you want to display to the user. So in ours, we want to say, welcome to my favorite animals app. So left side user interface, we're going to drag this over. I'm going to rename this LBL, which stands for label, user MSG, user message. You can look at the properties. It looks very similar. Background, font, font size, height, width, text, text color. So we're going to customize it. Here I'll keep it consistent. I have yellow. I made mine bold and italics. So I'm going to say, welcome to my favorite animals app. I can make it bold. Let's make that background yellow. Why not? You can make it whatever color you want. I also want to make it italics like that. And I could change that, the size of it. So you can see, really simply, I added in a label, I renamed it here, and I customized the properties. If I wanted to, I can change the font color like that as well, or to blue, or whatever I want. So getting close, we have our selfie image, we have our background, we have our label, we now need six things that we can touch and when we touch it it's going to do something. So six things are going to be buttons just like this is a button. We're going to program this button to speak but we're going to program the buttons below to actually play the sounds. This is a soundboard app. So we're going to need six buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for these six buttons, they're going to be animals, so we're going to rename them the animals. 
Now, before you get stuck on your favorite animals, I want you to go to soundbible.com. And on Sound Bible, here we're going to type in animal. We're using Sound Bible because App Inventor has a 10 megabyte limit. You don't, you, your app can't use really, really large files because of the 10 megabyte limit. So we're using Sound Bible because it gives you access to a sound file format called WAV. WAV files are smaller than MP3s. One MP3 file might be 5 megabytes, but we're going to need six sound effects. So we're going to use WAV files for this, and I'm giving you soundbible.com. We'll talk more about app size and, and media file size limits um, later on throughout the course. But for now, go to soundbible.com. You're going to type in animal. You're going to see they have a bunch of different animal sounds. So you're going to pick six of these. So I see angry cat that I like. I see zebra that I like. They're just scrolling through. I have pigs. So I want to save these files. And these are going to be my animals. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to do here to rename it. It's going to be BTN Angry Cat. I'm going to customize my button now so I can make this red. My text is going to say angry cat. My width, I can make it bigger. I can make this the size as well bigger. Let's play with width and let's make it 150. Actually, let's make it a lot bigger. Let's make it 250. And then I can play with, I want to make the shape rounded. I want this to be bold. I want it to be italics. I can change the color of it to be yellow. And there's my button for Angry Cat. So I'll do it again. Let's find another animal. And before I do that, let's go download my Angry Cat sound. So I have Angry Cat. It's going to sound like that. I want to download the WAV file. So I'm just going to save it to... That's a really Angry Cat. Let's pause it. So I click on Wave here because I want to save it. And I'm going to save it to my desktop for now. And I'm going to call it simply what it is, Angry Cat. So I have that file. I'll close that. Now, I'm going to come back, find something else I like. I saw Zebra. Sure. I'm going to need this file. So I'm going to save this as Zebra. Let's go back, find something. Let's go, actually, you'll find all our sound files now. Angry Chipmunk, a roaring lion. That's pretty good. So I'm going to click on my wave file. Do lion. Let's go find some other ones. Looking for some interesting ones. Uh, we can do an owl. So I'm going to click on my wave file here. Do owl. I need two more guys here. And if you don't love the list here, I'm going to give you up. I like a monkey, sure. <laughs> And I need one more. Well, I, I give you Sound Bible, but also in the class instructions, I give you something else called Wave Source. So let me show you the last one using Wave Source because Wave Source is a little bit different um, the way you save it. So Wave Source has a bunch of different waves. Um, you're going to do your own soundboard, and you're going to use Wave Source to create a movie star or people or television soundboard of your own.
But animals, you can see it's right here. So I click on that, then I can go to the animals page. And on the animals page, they have a bunch of different cats, chickens, cows, dogs. I can go to the next page. Dog growling, elephant. I want an elephant in mind, why not? So when I click on elephant, it plays it, but there's nowhere for me to click on that save part. So what you have to do is right click and do save as, and then it pops up and it allows you to type in what you want to save it as. So now I know I have these. You come back over in App Inventor and I'm gonna finish up my buttons. So I have BTN Zebra. Down here, I'm going to type zebra. I'm going to keep my buttons consistent, so I'm going to make it red. He made the height, I mean the width, sorry, 250. I made it bold. I also made the shape rounded. And I made this bold. And the size was 20. So I come down here, make this size 20. And lastly, the color is yellow and rounded. So there's my zebra. Let's do my next one, BTN lion. Like that. I'll come here, I'll type lion. I'll make my color red. I'll make my font size 20. I'll make it bolded. I'll make my width of the button 250. I'll make the shape rounded and I will change this to yellow. I'll come here. My next guy was BTN Owl. I'll make my background red. I'll make my font size 20. I'll make it bold. I'll make my width 250. I'll make my shape rounded and I'll make this Owl. And the color is yellow. Two more to go. BTN monkey. I'll make my color red. I'll make this 20. I'll make sure that it's bold. I'll change the width to 250. I'll change this to monkey. And I'll change the text color to yellow. And my shape to rounded. And my last guy up here, I'm gonna do BTN elephant. Again, I'll make my background red. I'll make sure it's bold. I'll change my font color size to be 20. I'll make the width 250. I'll make the shape rounded. And then I will type elephant here and change the color. So with that, we have a design that looks very similar to this. We have a cool background. We have a picture of ourselves. We have welcome to our favorite animals. We also have the six buttons. But we're actually not done. We have the buttons that when someone touches it, we can program something, but we don't actually have the sounds. We save the sounds. You can see I saved them here. But there's no place for us to actually, there's no component here that can play that sound for us. So we need to add a couple more components. I'm going to come over to media, left side, and you can see I have two choices. I have player and sound. These are going to be simple sound effects, so I'm going to use sounds. I'm going to drag these in. And this is not going to be using drive principles, but this is your first video. We'll learn about drive principles, which do not repeat yourself. You'll learn about that later on. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for practice, we're gonna do the same thing. S and D, I have Angry Cat. Now for Angry Cat, you can see the properties I simply have a source, so I'm going to go here and upload my Angry Cat WAV file. And you can see it shows up there. 
going to go to my next one. S and D for sound, Zebra. And I'm going to upload my Zebra wave file. I rename the next one, S and D Lion. I'm going to upload my Lion sound file. Next one I'm going to do, SND Owl. I'm going to upload my Owl sound file. Two more, SND Monkey. I'll go to Source, so I'll upload my Monkey sound file. Then last one is SND Elephant. And I will upload my elephant sound file. So now we have buttons that when someone touches them, um, we can program something, but we also have sound files down here in the non visible area that when they touch it, we can play the current sound file. There's one other component that we want to add. Remember I said when we we made this component a button, BT and Selfie, because when someone touches it, we want it to say, Welcome to my favorite animals app. In order to do that, we need to add the component in. Remember App Inventor, everything you need, you're going to pull from the left side in designer mode. So what we want to add here is the ability for our app to speak. We're right inside of media, you can see here there's something called text to speech. So when I'm able to make my app speak, I, and Swan touches this, it's going to talk to the person. I'm going to need this component. So I'm going to click and drag this and drag that in there. And with that, now we are complete with the design of our first app. We have, we started out, we customized our screen properties. We changed the app name, background color, the icon. We changed the opening and screen closing screen animations, and then we also made the screen orientation portrait. So if you look at, that's portrait, but this is landscape, so we wanted ours to be portrait. We also changed the title, which shows up up here. So we started out by customizing the properties here. We then worked with this button, which is an image of ourselves. We renamed it, and we customized the properties. Then we added in a label, the third component that you've used. We called it LBL user message. We customized its properties to show that. Then we added in six of these buttons with each animal. We renamed them. We customized the properties. Then lastly, we added in six sound effects. We renamed them here. We also uploaded the file in the source. And when someone touches our button, we want our app to speak, so we added in text-to-speech. This is the video that completes designing your first app, an animal soundboard app. Continue with the next video to show you how to code your animal soundboard app.